If we have a complex block diagram and we want to find the transfer function of that system, then we can reduce that block diagram to a simpler form, a canonical form. Or if we have a continuous system and we want to add a computer to it, we can, we'll end up with a, a block diagram with sample data and this video is going to show how to find the transfer function from a block diagram with sample data or how to reduce uh, more complex into a simpler block diagram to get the transfer function. So the problem statement is we want a transfer function of a system containing sample data or we want a simpler block diagram. And the solution that we're going to use is to employ the Z transforms for sampled systems and what's meant by that is on the next slide in conjunction with three rules for sampled data. So Z transforms for sampled systems here are what's being referred to here are pictures depicting what's being referred to. So if we have a system G of S and it has sampled input and sampled output then the Z transform is just G of Z, and the input is R of Z and output is C of Z. Another scenario is we have sampled input to G1 of S, its continuous output goes to G2 of S, and then the output of that C of S is sampled. So the Z transform of this subsystem is the Z transform of the product of G2 and G1. So we take these products in the S domain, so G1, G2, and then take the Z transform of that product. And that will give us the Z transform of this subsystem. And you can look at that as you know just an example or a, a case of this. So G1 cascaded with G2 is equivalent to GS, where GS equals G1 times G2. And so then the Z transform of this would just be G of Z, and that's the Z transform of G1 times G2, or G2, G1. Okay, the next scenario is if we have subsystem G1 with sampled input and sampled output, which goes to subsystem G2 as sampled output. And we want to find the Z transform of these two subsystems. So in this case, we have to take the product of the Z transforms of the subsystem. So we have G2 of Z times G1 of Z. And that's different from the previous case where we took the Z transform of the products. Okay, so here we have products of the Z transforms. Take the Z transforms first and then multiply them. And then here's one last scenario where we have a continuous input to G1 giving us output R times G1 which is sampled and is the input to G2 and that has sampled output. So if we just look at G2, then we have this scenario, sampled input, sampled output. So we have G2 of Z and C of Z, and then we want to find the Z transform of this sample data, and that is just the Z transform of the product R and G1. So R of S, G1 of S, uh, Z transform of that is the input to this subsystem G2 of Z. So that's how to find the Z transforms for sampled subsystems. And then we want to use the following three rules for moving blocks and samplers um, in a block diagram. So the three rules. One, it's okay to place a phantom sampler at the output of any subsystem with sampled input. So a phantom sampler. We're only concerned with the out... If we have sampled input to a subsystem, then we're only concerned with the output at those sampling times. It's okay, the second rule, it's okay to add phantom samplers at inputs to summing junctions whose output is sampled. Uh, okay to add phantom samplers at inputs to summing junctions whose output is sampled. So a summing junction where different lines come in and are summed. And then pickoff points, we can move a sampler after a pickoff point by just adding it to the all branches after the pickoff point. So here's an example using those rules and the Z transform for the subsystems. So we have this um, feedback system, G and H, 
and then we add a sampler before G, and we want to find out what the Z transform of the system is. So we can use our rule about the summing junctions. If we have the output of a summing junction is sampled, we can add phantom samplers to the inputs. So that's what we've done here with S2 and S3, sampler 2 and sampler 3. And then for a subsystem with sampled input, we can add a phantom sampler to the output. So that's what we did here with S4. So this is equivalent to this. And then we want to move this block and the sampler past the pickoff point. So we can do so just by um, moving, copying the block to both branches of the pickoff point. So we have G and G, and then the same thing with the sampler. So we have S1 and S1. So now uh, we've moved the block and the sampler past the pickoff point. And now we have sampled input and sam subsystems with sampled inputs and outputs. So we can find the transfer, the Z, the Z transform of all these subsystems. So here we have the subsystem is, or transfer function is G of S times H of S. So the Z transform of that is just Z transform of G times H. And then here we have um, G of S with sampled input and output. So we, have, we get G of Z and R of Z. And so here is our block diagram in the Z domain. And we can reduce this because it's in our canonical feedback form. So we know that the transfer function here is 1 over 1 plus um, this block. So G times, or Z transform of G times H and then G of Z. And so we end up with the transfer function G of Z over 1 plus G times 1 plus G H of Z. So the Z transform of G times H. So those were that was the process for finding the transfer function when we have a block diagram of a sampled data system.